Hello friends, welcome back to Construct Worldwide. This video is about how Afghanistan's hardline Islamist Taliban rulers are keen on showcasing their government's military prowess by frequently displaying repaired helicopters and planes from the country's inventory of aging aircraft. What happened to the tanks and helicopters of the Taliban government? Before we move on, don't forget to like and subscribe to the video. Many of the items had been disabled by departing US troops or are beyond the ken of Taliban fighters to operate. But a bitter result of the chaotic Western withdrawal from Afghanistan is that the very group the U.S. oosted 20 years ago, it was not only back in power, but better equipped militarily than ever before, repelling adversaries and enforcing its brand of repressive rule. In August of last year, the Taliban temporary government fixed 70 military aircraft and helicopters that U.S. soldiers had destroyed during their 20-year stay in Afghanistan. The Taliban's Ministry of Defense said that their technical team and engineers have also managed to repair hundreds of vehicles, including 150 International Kamazis, 125 Humvees, two assault tanks, four trucks, 10 Porcliffe vehicles, and 15 Humvee ambulances. The Taliban inherited more than 100 aircraft, most of which were inoperable when it returned to power. Taliban officials have said that pilots, mechanics, and other specialists from the former Afghan National Army would be integrated into their security forces. However, the once ragtag militant group that fought for 25 years using roadside bombs, suicide bombers, small arms, and rocket launchers is finding it difficult to realize its goal of creating a contemporary air force. Between 2002 and 2017, the United States transferred to the Afghan government over $28 billion worth of defense articles and services, including weapons, ammunition, vehicles, night vision devices, aircraft, and surveillance systems, according to the Special Inspector General for Afghanistan Reconstruction. Some of the aircraft were flown into neighboring Central Asian countries by fleeing Afghan forces a year ago, but the Taliban inherited leftover aircraft. It remains unclear how many are operational. The Russian-made Mi-17 transport helicopter in several subtypes is the most widely used Taliban helicopter. The group also has a small fleet of airworthy US-made Black Hawk multi-mission helicopters, as well as US-made MD-530s. Some A-29 attack fighters, a turboprop plane provided by the United States to the former Afghan government for air support and training, are believed to be serviceable. The Taliban also possesses Russian Antonov transport planes and US C-208 and AC-208 cargo aircraft. The majority of these combat aircraft are based in Kabul and Kandahar, according to Military Periscope. A Taliban official said the Kabul administration, we are all working together for Afghanistan's future. The newly formed army includes people from all ethnic groups. We need to be Afghan and Muslim, regardless of race. Initially, we used to provide a 40-day short-term training program. However, we have now increased the training period to three and six months. The arms have transformed the Taliban into a skewed version of the army the U.S. wanted the Afghans to have. While on the surface, this situation seems dire. These vehicles, even with trained operators, will offer little military value to the Taliban. In the end, this equipment set will end up like the graveyard of Soviet equipment abandoned throughout Afghanistan in 1989. Furthermore, these military vehicles require a substantial amount of maintenance, which the Taliban will likely not be able to provide even with foreign assistance. This maintenance of military vehicles requires technical expertise and access to specialized tools and spare parts. Before the Taliban takeover, the Afghan National Army leveraged contractor support for their technical expertise and American supply channels for the tools and spare parts. With the drawdown of NATO troops, many of these contractors opted to leave as well, resulting in many of the vehicles falling into a state of disrepair. The need for tools and spare parts further complicates the maintenance issue. With many of these vehicles being American, it is unlikely that the Taliban will have access to these items. Even with access to the supply channels, the items are more likely to end up on the black market than in the maintenance bay. This was a common issue faced by the Afghan National Army and can be expected to be an issue for the Taliban. Given these maintenance challenges, it is unlikely that the Taliban will be able to keep these vehicles operational. Quite simply, the parading of the captured military vehicles by the Taliban is simply propaganda. The vehicles do not have the full functionality of those used by modern militaries, are not that useful for their current operations, and will fall apart without proper maintenance. 
In the end, some of the vehicles will be turned into decorations, while most will be scrapped. If you liked the video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. Stay tuned for more amazing videos.